Conquering Faith Church. We praise God for you. We thank God for you. Bishop Rex A. Houston here, and along with my lovely wife, Cassandra Michelle. God bless you. And we certainly thank God for her being here on tonight with me. Uh, tonight, I'd love to speak to you about conscious faith. We don't have much time. We're going to come back uh, after she reads the scripture, and I'm going to outline some information for you, and uh, we'll go from there. Bless you, Bishop, and God bless you, Conqueror of Faith. Our scripture this evening is coming from Hebrews 11 and 6, and it reads, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy and righteous word. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We lift up hallelujah to your great name. You are such an awesome God, a magnificent God. God, and we do thank you for this space. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for the grand opulent Griffite studio to be able to uh, record we thank you for all that you've done, every way that you've made. God, I ask that you would take this word of conscious faith and write it indelibly upon the hearts of your people. Stamp it on their hearts, O oh God, that it may be a life-changing message. In Jesus' name, it is so. God bless you, Conquering Faith. <clears throat> conscious faith. What is conscious faith? Faith, you may be asking. The definition of conscious faith is certainly uh, active faith or faith used intentionally, faith used as a tool to change your life, to change your very existence, to change any situation uh, that you may be facing. I'd like to look at Genesis 37, just for a moment. There was a young gentleman of 17 years old. His name was Joseph. Joseph used intentional faith. Joseph used active and conscious faith. Joseph had 11 brothers. Can you imagine having 11 brothers to uh, fight with, 11 brothers to live with, 11 brothers to laugh with, but Joseph was the youngest of the 11 brothers, and Joseph's brothers were jealous of him. What is jealousy? Uh, many times we think that uh, 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 someone likes someone else more uh, than they like us. Somebody cares for someone else, or somebody does something for someone else that they're not doing for us, and we become uh, frictionous or jealous, so to speak. And Joseph's brothers, because Joseph was the youngest, they felt that Jacob uh, loved Joseph more. And so they didn't like Joseph very much. However, we all know the story in Genesis. Joseph was put into a pit. He was dropped into a pit, which was a well. He was sold into slavery. However, his older brother, Reuben, already had it in his mind that he was going to come back and he was going to pull Joseph out of the pit. They didn't want to hurt him. They didn't want to draw blood. They just wanted to teach Joseph a lesson about his dreams. Joseph went to them uh, and told them about his dreams. And he told his father. His father thought that Joseph's dreams were a bit strange. However, the brothers thought, well, who do you think you are? Uh, uh, why would you think that you may be above us? Or uh, whatever the case may be, that you would be better than we are. And they said, well, here comes that dreamer. They were out in a far land, and Joseph went, went out to uh, see his brothers and the brothers looked afar and said, 
Who was that coming? And they thought maybe it was some other men following, but no, it was actually just Joseph, and Joseph was alone. And they said, here comes that dreamer, and we'll fix him. We'll put him into a pit. They put him into a pit. And then there was a slave band that came by. They said, well, let's sell him to the, the uh, slave band. How would you feel? How much anger would you really have uh, if you were put into a pit? If you were sold into slavery. Many times in this life we face pits. We face slavery. Uh, when someone talks about us. When somebody lies on us. When somebody uh, brings a scathing indictment uh, against our name. Uh, or many times even on our, on our jobs. Our bosses. Our managers. Our supervisors. Uh, bring us into a situation where, the, where it feels like slavery. We feel like I'm getting up every morning just going to a job just for the money where I'm just slaving and slaving and slaving away and never advancing uh, in this particular situation. Let me move on. Joseph was there. Joseph was sold into slavery. Joseph went to Potiphar's house. Joseph was lied on by Potiphar's wife. Joseph was put into prison. Can you imagine staying calm through all of those things? Well, you say, Bishop, how do you stay calm? Joseph said, the Lord kept me. The Lord was with me. And I say to you, that if you're facing life, where you're facing life's situations, where you're facing the vicissitudes of life, are coming at you at breakneck speed, if your life seems to be spiraling out of control, I say to you, God says, be still and know that I am God. God says, set your face like a flint. What is a flint? A flint is a stone. It's a statue. And the eyes of the statue never are distracted. They never look left. They never look right. They are always forward. God says, if you keep your mind, hallelujah, yes, if you keep your mind stayed on me, I will keep you in perfect peace. Mm -hmm. I would venture to say, if your mind is not in perfect peace on this evening, then you may be looking to the left. You may be looking to the right. You may be trying to uh, force someone else to, uh, 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 you may be trying to force somebody else to bring you happiness or to be happiness for you or to be responsible for your happiness. Or you're trying to uh, be rulish and force somebody else to do something that is maybe they don't want to do. I say to you, God says, be still and know that I'm God. I will fight your battles. Mm -hmm. However, Joseph finally interpreted the king's dream. And Joseph was put the ruler over all the land. And he gave the king a formula that said, if you save some food, there's a famine coming. But if you save some food each year until the famine comes, you'll have enough food to last each year. And the king believed everything that Joseph said. And Joseph was right, as a matter of fact. Joseph now is the ruler of the land. His brothers come. They don't recognize him. But he recognizes them. He met with them a few days, a few times. And he just couldn't hold it any longer. He couldn't hold it any longer. It was bursting inside of him. He said, brothers, I am your brother Joseph. You don't recognize me. I am your brother Joseph. They were afraid to speak because he was a very important person. He said, come closer. Look at me. I am your brother. I want to say to you tonight, Joseph was in a position that he had dreamed of in the very first place. I want to challenge you tonight to use conscious faith.
to use active faith. Continue dream. If you had a dream, you said, I had a dream, Bishop. Uh, I wanted to be this, or I wanted to be that, or I wanted to go here. I wanted to live out there. I wanted to do this. But somehow life, life came at me, and it just took my plans and balled them up like a crumpled piece of paper and threw them on the floor, not even in the garbage can. And I didn't know what to do. I say to you tonight, begin to dream again. God is giving you, God is ordaining you now. God is covering you now. God is opening the door for you to dream again. It's not by coincidence that you're hearing this message tonight. God says, dream again. And dream bigger. Dream again. Whatever it is that you thought you were going to be. Wherever it is that you thought you were going to go. Whatever business, that business that you wanted to start. Uh, whatever chain you wanted to start. Whatever, whatever talent that you may have. You may be a musician. You may be a preacher. You may be a lawyer. You may be a photographer. Whatever the case may be. I say to you, dream that dream again. Hallelujah to your name, God. Dream and dream again. Joseph was a dreamer. And at the end of Joseph's situation, Joseph was actually in the very position that he dreamed of in the first place. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. I say to you, whether it's finances, whether it's a spouse or a mate, whether it's friends or family, maybe a new car, a new house. I say to you, dream bigger because God is more than all of those things. We need to recognize God is our, our, our one source. God is our unfailing supply. Uh, certainly, uh, there have the, the news, the media, and other people have put out that there's uh, poverty and lack and scarcity in the land. Do you think, do you think, that the God that made this entire earth, mm, glory to your name, that made everything, that put the sun and the moon and the stars and the heavens and the oceans and the seas and the trees and the animals in place, do you think that that God would have not put enough here for everybody that's here? I do say to you, some have taken more than their share, but I do say that God is our unfailing supply and is able and willing to supply you with everything that your dream needs. So whatever your situation is, whatever it may be, I say to you, use conscious faith, intentional faith toward God, active faith toward God. May God bless you tonight, Conquering Faith Church. God is an awesome God, a magnificent God, a holy and righteous God, and he is the only true and living God. Thanks for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Cassandra Amen. Michelle, for being with me. I pray that this word is a life-changing word for you. Until next week, be blessed. Thank you, Lord.